When you're ready to get rid of your laptop, toss the charger, but hold on to the device. The new e-waste law says you'll get fined $100 for throwing away any electronics. Behind these black panels are construction crews working overtime, replacing fast food outlets with upscale businesses. But commuters, they're not happy with the MTA makeover. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, under former athletic director Jim Fiore, the Seawolves became a Division I team and brought home 33 conference championships. Now, when he left, Stony Brook had to find a new person who would be able to advance the Seawolves in conferences and divisions. Our field reporter, Agatha McCallick, took a look back into his life. Researchers tested the railing, the turnstile, and even the door handle and found 562 species of bacteria. But don't worry, the city says there's no harm to human health. To combat the bad tipping culture, Cafe Grumpy uses a system at checkout to encourage their customers to tip after buying a cup of coffee. I sort of had, uh, I guess you could call it like a premature midlife crisis. And with that, 32-year-old Dennis Doyle spent $25,000 to attend every Knicks game this season. I was like 11 years old um, when they made the run to the finals in 94, and that was, uh, that was sort of what, what hooked me. From his Astoria apartment, Doyle explains he was let go from his high-paying and high-pressure job as a lawyer in Manhattan. And last year, he decided to make the best of unemployment. I decided to, to take some time off to, um, to do some traveling. And one way to do that um, was by following around my favorite team. But now, more than halfway through the season, the team's disappointing record of 10 and 44 has made Doyle's job as a fan a tougher one than he expected. It's not going to get any easier for me, I think. Um, it's, it certainly makes the game's a little bit more difficult to watch. Doyle but. says the losses haven't defined the experience. He's traveled to 24 cities and one country, and even met the Knicks power forward Jason Smith on the road. London was great. It was like a, I got to spend like a week there, do all like the, you know, the typical tourist sightseeing stuff, and then, um, you know, throw in a, a lousy basketball game at the end of the week. Doyle admits people have called him crazy. But he says this experience has been about more than attending basketball games. It's a personal journey. In a sense, like, I've never been able to stop being a Knicks fan for my whole life. I mean, there have been really awful seasons along the way where um, I would have been more than happy to, to sort of leave them behind. But that's sort of, um, sort of one of the themes of this is, is kind of being attached to the team. Despite the Knicks' record, Doyle plans on attending the last 24 games and hopes to write a book about his experience. In Astoria, I'm Jacqueline Latanza. The culture of looking at street art is no longer frowned upon. Just search the hashtag NYC Graffiti on Instagram and 140,000 posts appear, exposing users from all around the world to art that is only in one location. With Instagram, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, everyone can see you get up everywhere, you know, it's, it's enabled you to become so much more popular than to just your neighborhood. Now you can be worldwide. Looking at the graffiti on Instagram is easy. Tracking down the artists is not, since the exposure like this can increase the risk of getting caught. But we tried anyway. And after artists ignored our requests for an interview and mistook us for cops, we tracked down a graffiti artist known as Dupe, who agreed to a phone interview. I do it to just express myself. It gives me an opportunity to get away from all of that and just separate myself from all the stress and just worry about nothing else but just painting. Graffiti art is illegal, but most people are not bothered by the sight of it. I really have no problem with it. I don't think it's damaging too much. I think as long as it looks nice and it's adding something nice to look at, I don't think there's anybody being hurt by it. No harm done. But according to the New York City Police Department, Graffiti vandalism is a crime punishable by a jail term, monetary fine, and or community service. Any person caught defacing property without the express permission of the owner will be arrested. For Dupe, who has a full-time job as an investment banker, the adrenaline rush is worth the risk. When you're on the street and you're doing it just to kind of get up and get out there, there's that rush, there's that thrill, there's that need to just make sure that it gets done, done quickly, and you don't get caught. And he's always ready to tag his name. I always have a can, so wherever there's a spot, mm -hmm. I hit it. 
In Long Island City, I'm Jacqueline Latanza.